It sounds like such a tiny everyday question, something you only think about when you accidentally bump into a door you thought was supposed to go the other way. We've all experienced that awkward moment where you grab the handle with full confidence, only to pull, and the door stubbornly refuses to move. Then you push, and it finally gives in, almost mocking you on the way out. But behind those little moments of embarrassment lies an entire world of design, psychology, safety rules, and even cultural habits. Let's dive right into it, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's begin with something called user-centered design. Designers and architects don't just build things to look good, they build them to guide us, to subtly tell us how to use something without needing instructions. A push plate, for example, is a visual cue. A flat surface means, don't grab this, just shove it. A handle, on the other hand, is like an invitation. It practically whispers, pull me. These cues are simple but powerful. So when a door contradicts them, like a pull handle that needs pushing, people get confused. These designs are called Norman doors, named after Don Norman. But beyond confusing cues, door direction is mostly about safety. In public buildings, exit doors must push outward so crowds can escape quickly during emergencies. If the door needed to be pulled inward, people would pile up against it, blocking it completely. History proved how dangerous this was. In the early 1900s, tragedies like the Iroquois Theater fire in Chicago showed that inward opening exit doors caused massive loss of life because crowds couldn't pull them open. Since then, outward pushing exit doors became the global standard. This is why in almost any public place, if you're leaving, you push. If you're entering, you pull. The building is guiding you without saying a word. Then there's the matter of efficiency and space. Imagine you're carrying two grocery bags, trying to enter a store. If the entrance door required pushing inward, you'd bump your way in and block people trying to leave. A pull to enter door solves that problem. You can open it without stepping into the space people are exiting from. Meanwhile, as people leave through push doors, they flow outward without slowing down incoming traffic. It's a simple difference, but in crowded places, it keeps everything moving smoothly. In smaller spaces, the logic changes. For example, think of a tiny bathroom in a coffee shop. If that door swung inward and someone fainted or collapsed inside, rescuers wouldn't be able to open it. They'd be blocked by the person's body. For this reason, small bathrooms often have outward opening doors, even though it might surprise you on the first encounter. In other situations, inward opening bathroom doors are chosen to prevent the door from swinging into a hallway where someone might be walking by. Another factor you may not think about is wind. For buildings in windy areas or places that experience storms, the direction of the door matters more than you'd expect. Some doors are designed to pull inward because pushing them outward would risk the wind ripping them open. On the flip side, storm-resistant buildings like bunkers or emergency shelters often have outward opening doors so extreme winds press the door more tightly against its frame, keeping it sealed. Beyond the physical design, there's also psychology, how we instinctively approach doors. People assume a vertical bar means push, while a rounded handle means pull, and designers use these cues on purpose. Hospitals use push plates so staff can enter quickly with equipment and restaurant kitchen doors push outward so servers don't slow down. Even the type of room affects how the door operates. Private spaces, like bedrooms, often have doors that pull inward. 
It gives the person inside control and prevents the door from swinging out into the corridor. Offices and conference rooms follow a similar pattern, but for places where fast exits matter, garages, workshops, basements, doors tend to push outward. Fire safety again plays a major role here. Automatic doors change everything. Sliding doors remove the push or pull problem entirely. They're made for people carrying things, getting distracted or needing easier access, and they save space while accommodating wheelchairs. That's why airports, malls, and hospitals rely on them for heavy foot traffic. In places where doors still need to swing, some buildings use double swing saloon doors, though they can be noisy, hard to secure, and easy to block. There's also a cultural side to door design. Different countries have different habits. Some expect shop doors to pull open, others to push. Some cultures prefer inward opening private rooms, while others favor outward opening ones for practicality. These preferences shape architectural norms and building standards, creating regional door logic that feels obvious to locals but confusing to visitors, much like driving on the left or right. Even material and cost factor in. Heavy doors, made of metal or reinforced wood, are harder to pull. So they're often configured to push from the direction where the most force is needed. Lighter doors, like those inside homes, can swing either way and are chosen based on convenience rather than physics. Meanwhile, commercial doors often use hydraulic closers that pull them back shut automatically. The placement of these closers affects which direction the door can open. Every choice dominoes into the next. So the next time you walk through a door, imagine the chain of decisions behind it. A push or a pull might seem trivial, but it's the end result of architecture, safety codes, psychology, cultural norms, and even the way people move through a space. It's a reminder that good design is invisible, not because it's simple, but because it quietly takes care of dozens of little details so that our day flows smoothly. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.